Welcome to Deep Lizard. My name's Mandy, and in this episode, we'll be discussing GPU support for TensorFlow and the integrated Keras API, as well as how you can get your code running on the GPU. Now, before jumping into the GPU specs, I just wanted to elaborate a bit more on a point that we brought up in the previous episode. So it's important to understand that Keras is now completely integrated within the TensorFlow API. It's no longer a standalone API of its own. It's now fully been integrated. And so when we talk about Keras now, we're not talking about it separately from TensorFlow. It's now just an API that's integrated within the TensorFlow library that we have access to. And actually, the standalone version of Keras is no longer even being maintained or having bug fixes provided by the Keras team. Now, with that being said, because Keras actually integrates so deeply with the low-level TensorFlow functionality, we can actually make use of the high-level functionality of Keras for most things that we want to do without ever having to actually go more deeply into the lower-level TensorFlow code. For more complex things, that's something that we might want to do, but for many things, many common things that we're doing with deep learning and neural networks, we can use the higher level Keras API integrated with TensorFlow without having to necessarily go deeper into the lower level TensorFlow code. All right, so hopefully that provides some clarification around the Keras integration within TensorFlow. So now let's move on to the main topic of GPU support. TensorFlow, including Keras, now runs transparently on a GPU with no additional code configuration required. And GPU support for TensorFlow is currently available for both Windows and Ubuntu systems with CUDA-enabled cards. Now, in terms of getting your TensorFlow code to run on the GPU, note that now operations that are capable of running on a GPU will default to doing so if both a GPU and a CPU are detected. So if you have both a GPU and CPU on your machine and you're calling an operation that is capable of running on a GPU, then it will do so by default. That's a lot of GPUs in just a few sentences. <laughs> if, however, you don't want this default functionality, then there is a way to explicitly control which device your code runs on, but we'll touch on that later in the course. For now, we're going to focus on how to actually get set up with a GPU so that you can make use of that option if you'd like to. Starting with hardware requirements, the only thing that you need is an NVIDIA GPU with CUDA compute capability. And that's for both Ubuntu and Windows systems. Now, the steps coming forward are going to differ a bit for Linux systems versus Windows. We're actually going to focus on the Windows side because for Linux, actually, the recommended way to go is to install a Docker image and run all of your TensorFlow code within that. And going that way, uh, you only have to just install the NVIDIA drivers. And it's a pretty straightforward process. And TensorFlow has that entire process documented in a guide, which is linked to in the corresponding blog for this episode. So if you're interested in going that route, then check that link in the blog. Otherwise, we're going to cover the Windows procedure because that's a little bit more involved. So we're going to go through all those steps now. Okay, so all of the upcoming steps are now going to be specific to Windows users. So first things first, we need to have TensorFlow installed, which we talked about in the last episode as being as simple as pip install TensorFlow. But I told you guys to be sure to check the system requirements so that you had your environment in order to be able to install TensorFlow. There's a specific requirement for a C++ redistributable. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> There's a specific requirement for a C++ redistributable that you need before you install TensorFlow. And if you don't have that installed, then whenever you try to import TensorFlow in your code, you're going to get an error about a DLL failing to load. So I'll put that exact error, as well as the redistributable that you need to download, I'll put a link to that, as well as the error that you'll get if you don't have that installed in the blog so that you can check that out. But be sure to check those system requirements have everything you need in order to install TensorFlow, then get TensorFlow installed with pip install TensorFlow. Then we can move on to the very specific things that we have to do specifically for GPU support. All right, so now that we have TensorFlow installed, the next thing we need to do is install the NVIDIA drivers. So first we need to download them. And to do that, we can come to the NVIDIA website 
and we need to specify our GPU that we have as well as the product series and things of that nature. So the download and installation process is pretty straightforward for the NVIDIA drivers. But if you're unsure about the specs of your GPU, then you can just open your device manager and go to your display drivers and you should see your NVIDIA GPU there. And with that information, you can then understand what you need to specify here on the download page for which driver that you need to download. So then after you download the driver that corresponds to your GPU, you need to go through just the simple installation wizard to get the NVIDIA drivers installed on your machine. Then after that's done, we need to install the CUDA toolkit. And to do that, that's also available on NVIDIA's website. And you can see here we have this CUDA toolkit archive that has all the versions available for the CUDA toolkit. And it's important that whenever you download and install uh, this software that you look at the currently supported toolkit versions for TensorFlow. So here on TensorFlow's site, you're able to see the version that's currently supported for the CUDA toolkit. This is obviously going to change over time. So just be sure to check that you're installing a version that is currently supported by TensorFlow. So after we find the version that is supported that we need, then we download that and start the installation procedure. And that is again through an installation wizard. And actually, if you're going through the installation procedure and you see an error message that looks like this, no supported version of Visual Studio was found. Some components of CUDA Toolkit will not work properly. Please install Visual Studio first to get the full functionality. So that's something that I actually ran into when I was installing the CUDA Toolkit. And um, come to find out, the uh, Microsoft Visual Studio is actually required for the CUDA Toolkit. So that's not stated currently, at least on TensorFlow's website. Uh, the reason that that error message is coming up is because it is a prerequisite for the CUDA Toolkit itself as stated here on this page. So now we need to jump over and install or download and install the Visual Studio. Uh, the Community Edition is fine. And whenever you download it and begin the installation, you're going to get asked about all these different workloads and options that you want to install and configure. You actually don't need anything except for the base installation. So just get that installed and restart your installation rather for the CUDA toolkit. And then you should not get that warning anymore about not having Visual Studio as you will have that now installed on your machine. All right, so then once that's finished, we now need to download and install the QDNN SDK. And to do that, again, it's on NVIDIA's website. For this download in particular, you actually have to register as a user on the site first, and then you're going to have to go through an email verification process. The whole thing's free, but you got to do that as a first step before you can actually download QDNN. Uh, once you already register, then you'll have the option to download the SDK here. And then you'll just need to agree to the terms of the license agreement, and you'll have these options for which version of QDNN you want to download and install. And recall that the CUDA toolkit, I told you that you need to be aware of which version you're downloading so that you are installing a version which is currently supported by TensorFlow. So as you can see on this page, the QDNN versions uh, correspond to the CUDA toolkit versions. So you need to be careful to choose the QDNN download that corresponds to the supported version of the CUDA toolkit that you downloaded. What does QDNN stand for? CUDA Deep Neural Networks. Oh yeah. <laughs> so now after we have QDNN downloaded, we have to go through the install process, which for this one, there's no like wizard to go through or anything relatively easy like that. Uh, instead, it requires some manual labor on our ends to get QDNN installed. So this page that we have up right here actually goes through the explicit instructions for the install procedure. We're going to walk through that right now. So first things first, this zip file is what has been downloaded. And this folder here is just uh, the extracted zip file that I have done previously before recording. And if we go inside, we see this structure here with bin, include, and lib folders. Now, actually, what we need to do, let's pull this over a bit. We need to go on our machine where the CUDA toolkit has been installed, which by default is in C program files. 
NVIDIA GPU computing toolkit, CUDA, and then the version for which you installed. And here we can see the corresponding directories to this bin include and lib directories over here that we downloaded. Uh, what we need to do first is we're going to go into the bin folder from the download and we see this DLL here. We need to then take that DLL and drop it into the folder on our machine within the NVIDIA install directory. And that's actually here. I've already copied and pasted it here. And if we go back, then go into the include folder, we have this qdnn.h file. So then if we go into our CUDA install path on our machine and go into the include folder, we can see qdnn.h here, which I pasted in just previously. Now, lastly, we need to go into this lib directory, x64. We have this qdnn.lib file. Now, if we go back to lib x64 on our install path on our NVIDIA, uh, in our install directory for NVIDIA uh, CUDA toolkit, we can see we have qdnn.lib, which I pasted in. So it's just a matter of taking these three files from the download directory and then pasting them in to where NVIDIA is installed on our Windows machine. So then after we copy and paste all of those files in the relevant directories, we're then going to go to our environment variables, which we can just type that into our search bar, maybe if we know how to spell environment correctly. And we go here and we will go to the advanced tab, which is pulled up by default environment variables. And we want to look down here at the system variables, find the variable called CUDA path, and then it will also likely have the version of CUDA that you have uh, appended to the CUDA path. And you want to make sure that that is in this location here, that it's pointing to the correct install path of the CUDA toolkit, which in our case, you can see that's exactly where we've been working right back here. Well, yeah, so that's exactly where we've been working right here. So you just want to make sure that that matches where we've been moving the files from the QDNN uh, download. So then we'll just click OK if we verify that that's correct. If it's not correct, then change it to uh, match your install path. And then the final step, which is just something that I had to do, I did not see this documented. Uh, I did a restart after this because actually whenever I tried to load the GPU in code, uh, in TensorFlow code, after this procedure, it was not identifying my GPU at the time. It was telling me that actually one of the files that uh, I'll show you actually, it was telling me that it could not find this QDNN 64 underscore seven DLL. Uh, which we have correspondingly already moved to here. So it existed on my machine, but whenever I was trying to load the GPU using TensorFlow code, it wasn't identifying this particular DLL, which is required to load the GPU. So uh, I tried a few things and uh, it was not resolving itself. So I restarted my machine and it was able to find the DLL uh, just after a restart. So I recommend you doing that if you run into that same issue. I will put the exact error message in the blog as well so that you can see for yourself the exact details of that error. All right, our next step is just to verify that TensorFlow is able to identify that we have a GPU on our machine. And so to do that, I have opened up a Jupyter Notebook and imported TensorFlow. You can do this in Jupyter Notebook as well or whatever IDE uh, you prefer to use. And after importing TensorFlow, we, this, we then just run this line of code, uh, which is going to list the physical devices that TensorFlow is able to uh, identify. So I have this line here that's going to print out the number of GPUs available. We're looking for devices that are listed as GPUs with this particular line of code. And we have some verification that there is one GPU available on my machine. So that is how you can verify that all the steps that we went through earlier were done correctly and that TensorFlow can now access your GPU. So if you get the same output as I did where your GPU is being able to be identified by TensorFlow, then that's it. That's all we actually have to do uh, going forward to get TensorFlow to run code on the GPU because as we mentioned at the start of this episode, TensorFlow code runs on the GPU by default when there is one available. 
Now, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode on deeplizzard.com because there you'll be able to access the written steps of everything that we went through in this video, as well as access all the links and documentation and error messages, everything that we touched on, you'll be able to find that in the blog for this episode. Also, did you know that Deep Lizard has a vlog? On our vlog channel, we document our travels and show some things from our everyday lives. Fun fact, we are actually filming this from Vietnam right now. So go check out Deep Lizard Vlog on YouTube. And consider joining the Deep Lizard Hive Mind where you'll have download access to the code files we'll be using in this course, as well as other rewards. I'll see you next time.